Hi. So today I'm doing some glazing and I've got buckets of glaze with various levels, amounts, you know, at some point I have to mix them back up or put them in something more narrow so I can glaze tall things. But right now I'm working with my blue. So I like to do this, if you're working with production pottery, instead of like opening up all your glaze buckets all at once and like going like crazy, just for me I do all the blues first, or at least most of them. Usually there's some stragglers and I've got to go back to the blue, but I kind of do it in chunks. So if I made a hundred of something, hundred mugs let's say, and I have like ten main glazes, I know, well I actually wouldn't do um, ten each. I would have my more popular glazes that I probably do 12 or 14 of them each and then other ones that are less popular but are nice to kind of have in the mix for a variety of color I'll do like whatever I can't remember what I just said but like six each or whatever so I don't know why I'm bending down here <laughs> so um so I'm going to start with my blue and here's all of these tips are the most simple thing but it's so easy to not think about them and then have to take extra steps um, afterwards so it's just these are things that I just think about all the time so I kind of have my systems down so if you probably watch this and you think duh of course if you have a full bucket of glaze do your tall things first but the fact is that sometimes it's really fun to glaze little things you get a lot done fast and then all of a sudden you're like oh god that huge pitcher now I can't glaze it because there's only that much glaze left in the bucket so tall things first um, when you start running out of glaze though like like, I have these, whoops, dogs, I have these dogs, um, I have these, just whatever, plastic pitchers, and so for something like these oil bottles, uh, I could have very little glaze left in my big bucket, but I could still uh, fill the little bit of glaze back that I have left into this uh, pitcher, and then be able to eat glaze that easily in there, so... So different forms are different. The best would be if I could glaze some teapots right now, but I have some time and <laughs> I'm going to counter what I just said and I'm going to glaze the little stuff first because that's kind of what I feel like. But actually I'll do these tall guys. I'm going to do these oil bottles. So I just mixed up my uh, glaze, but I'll do it again. I'll show you what I do. Okay, this is probably not so kosher, but this is People would see this and they're like, oh my god, I've never seen a drill just sitting in a sink before. But I always have my drill sitting in my sink. It just sits like that. It's just perfect. Oh, this is like a like a laundry type of sink. Pretty nice. But oh, look how embarrassing. I'm showing you the inside of my sink. It always looks like this. It's disgusting. So here's where I say, if you feel like you're supposed to be my apprentice, I could probably use somebody in here to clean up. So I'm thinking about maybe having people come for like a week and do an apprenticeship and pay for a room and board and stuff and a little bit for me for some lessons and instruction, but I'm open to doing that. So if you can afford that, it's going to be really expensive. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to my studio. So I need somebody to clean it up, blah, blah, blah. And here's my, um, my drill. It's like got one of these guys on it, mixer guy. And so it just always lives in there. And now here I go. I'm going to mix up this glaze even though I already did. So look, see it's so nice. You just let it sit there. This is the best way to mix glazes. Is uh, I haven't done the sieving yet, you know, the mixing the glaze. I still have my, uh, I need to do those glazes. But clay supply store is closed today and I still need some tin and frit and stuff like that. You don't care. <laughs> I'm so, edit. <laughs> It. Okay, let's just keep going here. So here I have my um, drill and I'm going to brace myself, start it off slow as a variable speed drill and then um, just go around the bottom of the bucket gently and so, whoops, sorry. so then I take it out of the glaze, I take the bit out of the glaze and I go fast. Like that gets most of the glaze off the bit and um, and back into the glaze bucket. Little tricks, right? Little things. Okay, so now, oh, I wanted to show you. So I think that a glaze for me is mixed right to the right consistency when it has this like heavy cream consistency as visually after you mix it. So let's see if we can see that. I hope I don't drop my phone into the glaze bucket. So spin it. 
and then stop it and watch how it goes a little bit a little bit a little bit and then it's pretty much done it's like you can count to maybe two or three i gotta go stop the dogs you can count to maybe two or three, one, two, and then it stops. So you don't want it swirling around in there forever, except for, for me, I do my, um, look at my purple house. <laughs> this is where you could stay for a lot of money. <laughs> so, um, <sighs> I'm lost. Oh yeah, the, the thickness of the glaze. So if you go get spinning around and around and around, it just keeps going after you spin that drill. Then it's pretty thin, but maybe good for an inside glaze. I like my liner glaze to be just as thick as I need it because I need so much of it and I want it to go far. So I just get it to be as just as thick as I need it. Okay, so now we've mixed this glaze and I taught you a little bit about that, how thick your glaze should be. Oh, and if it stops right away, that is a thick glaze. So. If you want a thick glaze, then that's good, but I don't, none of my glaze, oh, one of my glazes, I need to leave it pretty thick. Yeah, raspberry, framboise, framboise. You might be able to find that one online. A French friend of mine gave it to me, and I love it. Framboise, F-R-A-M-B-O-I-S-E. There's one, I just gave it away. It was given to me, what are you going to do? So, okay. Here's how I glaze these. They're already waxed on the bottom, hot wax. Hot wax is nice because you can really trust it. Like basically, it'll keep the glaze. I, I'm saying that, it'll keep the glaze off of it, but I can see that this is like a little dry around the edge. So anyway, so I go down, remember the exhale. So I go down, I'm gonna hold it in. I have a nice line that I cut into the top of that pot. So I'm just gonna do it right to that line. It's nice to do that. And then this glaze, I know it could run. I shake it off, whoops, can you see? Shake it off and then do one big uh, to get that glaze off the bottom. Now I did that a little bit too late, but so now I have all these guys. I'm just gonna, okay. <laughs> sponge, I'm kind of disorganized today. Sponge, I remember seeing it over here. Sponges are one of those things you buy like 10 of them and then for some reason you only have one. Okay, I just use these like synthetic sponges. I don't know why I'm such a natural girl just generally, but I like the synthetic sponges. What are you going to do? Okay, so there I go. Now what I'm going to do is so I held it in there for whatever three seconds, down, up, I clean the bottom. And then I'm going to, next step is to glaze the top. They're already glazed on the inside with black glaze the top and then do decoration here and that's pretty much how I glaze these guys those are these oil bottles really simple um, I think that's enough for now I'll do some more glazing other stuff some other oh here's a good trick let me just show you this okay okay so mugs um, see this is all because of the way that I do what I do, so it might not be a, a big trick for you. But anyway, no, I don't think anybody would care about this. Okay, well, let's just say you do. So here, one thing with glazing with design is that it's not nice to just chop things off and have lots of like bam lines, right? So like, especially not like right in half of the pot. Try to stay away from halves. Go to more like two thirds or three quarters. It's just, I think even two thirds is, it's just, it's like that, um, I think it's the ratio of the Nautilus. It's just pleasing, 66%, right? Something like that is like, uh, it's pleasing, it's warming, and so it's a better design than 50-50 or even 75. I think two-thirds, go for two-thirds. So here we go. I'm going to glaze up to this line right here, to about two-thirds, right, of the pot. It's just a pleasing ratio. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into the glaze like this. Imagine the bottom is the is the surface of the glaze. You go down to the line and then when I take it out I'm going to whoosh and glaze up the handle. So then there's not a straight glaze line um, across like that. That's, there's something kind of ugly about those lines. It's much more pleasing if this ends here and then the blue kind of comes up here and then there would be a second color here. But even so you just don't want to have a visible line right there. Okay. Oh, here, I'll watch you. You can watch me do it. <laughs> okay. 
So I'm going to go down and in, exhaling, one, two, three. And then top of the handle, just really quick. I don't have to do it for as three seconds because um, it's going to get mostly get overlapped with another glaze anyway. So now I'm just shaking this out. Again, try to shake it up off the foot. But here's like a big kind of whoosh, which actually with this glaze is kind of nice. I'm just going to kind of soften it with my finger. And you don't have to do that, but sometimes I like to do that. And that's it. And then just like the oil bottle, the blue will get a second different color up on top. Just because I kind of like tricolor and then with my clay body it's like four colors so okay and then I'll do other stuff anything else I should show you right now that's enough for now 10 minutes 11 minutes my videos are getting long have whoops have a good day oh you want to see my whole studio look all these pots all ready to all ready to the everything is so full right now all ready to get glazed. Look at all those guys. Wow. And then there's some more over here. So it's kind of a lot of stuff and right now I don't have any room so I like have to glaze stuff into the kiln. That's just how it gets around here. Maximize space. Also, you should check out these shelves. If you have somebody who could build your shelves, or if you could build yourself shelves, or if you want to build shelves and sell them to potters, these shelves are awesome. Check it out. It's just two by fours vertical, and then little one by two slats, right? And then these boards slide in and out, so it's totally um, adjustable, and it's two boards deep. It's 24 inches deep so it holds a lot of pots and then look clay storage and stuff underneath and bats and this is just the best rack and uh, this one they're most of them are on rollers but they're so big and heavy I could never move them but theoretically I could. Alright. Bye.